So you've got to go back to in the beginning, and let me say that we have all been evolutionized to some extent through our upbringing in public schools. And I'm going to speak more about that. But I want to start right at the beginning to say, I take Genesis literally. God, God said it. I believe it. That settles it. And I got news for you. Somebody said that once. I believe it. God said it. And that settles it. God said it. And that settles it whether we believe it or not. Amen. Amen. And whether the scientific community wants to believe it or not. But folks, they're going to great stretches to try to prove an unprovable case. The, we're going to take about six and a half minutes to watch a video, which I don't generally take that long for something like this, but I think it bears it out this morning. The personification of the atheist movement in our world is a man named Richard Dawkins, a scholar in England who has written a book about uh, the myth of God or the God myth, something like that, where he attacks the very existence of any higher power. This video is an interview with him by Ben Stein. Ben Stein's not a Christian. Ben Stein is Jewish. Mm -hmm. Ben Stein is a very brilliant man. He's got a very, his IQ is off the charts. And frankly, he handles Richard Dawkins very handily. In fact, getting him to a point of acknowledging the possibility of intelligent design. Folks, under our system in our country, today. And this is from a documentary called Expel that Ben Stein did. There are professors, many professors, who have lost their jobs, now get this, for suggesting the possibility of intelligent design. I'm not talking about embracing the Genesis account of creation. I'm not talking about pushing Christianity. But acknowledging the possibility of God, of a God, a creator who created this universe, of suggesting the possibility many uh, professors have lost their jobs. One at the University of Iowa. And Stein interviews several of these and goes and tries to get behind the case. And the <coughs> University of Iowa did, in fact, acknowledge that was why they let the man go. Um, and so he compares throughout his documentary this attitude in the scientific community, he compares it to the Berlin Wall. He said, you've got freedom on this side of the wall, but you don't have freedom to cross the wall. He's saying that the acknowledgement of the existence of God is that wall that they won't let the scientific community, won't allow anyone to cross. And I'll tell you, that's not true science. That's junk science. Mm -hmm. And so, to prove my point, I want us just to watch this interview with the foremost atheist in the world, Richard Dawkins. You got that queued up? All right. Thank you. Hello, Professor Dawkins. How are you? I'm Ben Stein. I'm just sorry to keep you waiting. How are you? Fine, thank you. You have, uh, you have written that uh, God is a psychotic delinquent invented by mad, deluded people. No, I didn't say quite that. I said something rather better than that. Oh, well, please tell us what said. Please tell us um, I, Well, I would have to read it from, from, from the book. No, please. The God of the Old Testament is arguably the most unpleasant character in all fiction. Jealous and proud of it. A petty, unjust, unforgiving control freak. A vindictive, bloodthirsty ethnic cleanser. A misogynistic, homophobic, racist, infanticidal, genocidal, filicidal, pestilential, megalomaniacal, sadomasochistic, capriciously malevolent bully. So that's what you think of God? Yeah. How about, how about people believe that a God of infinite lovingness and kindness and forgiveness and generosity, sort of like the modern day God. Why spoil it for them? Oh, um... Why not just let them have their fun and enjoy it? I mean, I don't want to spoil anything for anybody. I, I write a book, people can read it if they want to. Um, I believe that it is a liberating thing to free yourself from primitive superstition. So religion is a primitive superstition? Oh, I, I think it is, yes. So, uh, you believe it's liberating to uh, tell people that there is no God. I think a lot of people, when they give up God, feel a great sense of release uh, and freedom. Why do you think that? I mean, what's your well, dad? What's your scientist? What's your dad? I think, well, I've had a lot of, of letters saying that. And there are eight billion people in the world. Yeah, I mean, How many letters yeah, do you have? No, I haven't done that. I'm 
<laughs> Professor Dawkins seemed so convinced that God doesn't exist that I wondered if he would be willing to put a number on it. Well, it's hard to put a figure on it, but but I I, I mean I put it as something like you know. 99% against or something. Well, I didn't know it's 99% against, say, in 97. No, I did, you asked me to put a figure on it, and I, it, I'm not comfortable putting a figure on it. I think it's, I, I just think it's very unlikely. What? Well, but you couldn't put a number on it? No, of course not. So it, it would be 49%? Well, I, it would be, I mean, I, I think it's, it's, it's unlikely, but, but I, and, and it's quite far from 50%. How do you know? I don't know. I mean, I, I, I put an argument in the book. Well, then who did create the heavens and the earth? Why do you use the word who? You see, you, you, you immediately beg the question by using the word who. Well, then how did it get created? Well, um, by a very slow process. Well, how did it start? Nobody knows how, how it started. We know the kind of event that it must have been. We know the sort of event that, that must have happened for the origin of life. And what was that? It was the origin of the first self-replicating Molecule. Right, how did that happen? I've told you, we don't know. So you have no idea how it started? No, no, not, not, nor has anyone. Nor has anyone else. What do you think is the possibility that their that intelligent design might turn out to be uh, the answer to some issues in uh, genetics or in well, that evolution? It could come about in the following way. It could be that uh, at some earlier time, somewhere in the universe, a civilization evolved by probably some kind of Darwinian means to a very, very high level of technology and designed a form of life that they seeded onto perhaps this, this planet. Um, now, that is a possibility and an intriguing possibility. And I suppose it's possible that you might find evidence for that if you look at the, um, at the detail, details of biochemistry, molecular biology, you might find a signature of some sort of designer Wait a second. Richard Dawkins thought intelligent design might be a legitimate pursuit? Um, and that designer could well be a higher intelligence from elsewhere in the universe. But that higher intelligence would itself have had to have come about by some explicable or ultimately explicable process. It couldn't have just jumped into existence spontaneously. That's the point. So Professor Dawkins was not against intelligent design just certain types of designers, such as God. So the, the Hebrew God, the God of the Old Testament, he doesn't exist in your view. Uh, certainly, I mean, that would be a very unpleasant pro prospect. And uh, the trend, holy trinity of the New no, Testament. Nothing, nothing like that. Do you believe in any of the uh, Hindu gods? Like How Vishnu? can you ask such a question? You don't, right? could I? I mean, you why why would I, given that I don't believe in any others? You don't believe in the Muslim God? No. Why do you even need to ask? Well, I just wanted to be sure. So you don't believe in any god anywhere? Any god anywhere would be completely incompatible with with with, with anything that I've said. In, in, I, I, in, I, I just wanted to make sure you don't believe in any god anywhere. No. What if you, if after you die, you ran into God? He said, what have you been doing, Richard? I mean, what have you been doing? Having time would be nice to you. Yeah. I gave you a multi-million dollar paycheck yeah. over and over again with your book, and look what you did. Bertram Russell was at that point put to him, and he said um, something like, Sir, why did you take such pains to hide yourself? But if the intelligent design people are right, God isn't him. We may even be able to encounter God through science, if we have the freedom to go there. What could be more intriguing than that? So much for Richard Dawkins. <laughs> so much for the whole idea of a godless creation. They don't have a leg to stand on. Mm -mm. That being said, will you turn to the Word of God and let's look at truth. Genesis 1, chapter 1, verses 1 through 19. Shall we stand in honor of the reading of God's Word? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. 
And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness and called the light day. And the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. Then God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And thus God made a, the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, so the evening and the morning were the second day. Then God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth the herb that yields seed, the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, the herb that yields seeds according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit whose seed is in itself according to its kind, and God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the third day. Then God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. Let them be for signs and seasons, and for days and years. And let them be, and, and it was so. Then God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, the lesser to rule the night. He made the stars also. God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the light, from the darkness, and God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And may God have his blessing reading his word. Thank you, may be seated. I uh Hey, good morning. How you doing, Dan? Um I have uh come to the realization we've all been evolutionized. I grew up seeing the, the progression of man, you know, from the little drawing of ape and then Neanderthal and, you know, seeing those. And, and, and I was taught that was how it happened in school. Anybody else being taught that? Uh, and, but you know something? They always talk about the missing link. They can't ever find one. There's no evidence of one species ever becoming another species. None whatsoever. Uh, Dr. Lewis T. Moore is one of the uh, foremost evolutionists earlier time. And he said, and I quote, the more one studies paleontology, and that's the fossil record, the more certain one becomes that evolution is based on faith alone. Now this is an evolutionist. Another evolutionist, Sir Arthur Keith, really tipped their hand when he said, evolution is unproved and unprovable. We believe it because the only alternative is special creation, which is clearly unthinkable. <laughs> Beloved, that is the basis of their argument. It begins with the premise that there is no God. No, not the premise, the foregone conclusion that there is no God. And they work very hard to prove it. The problem is as science progresses, it draws us closer and closer to the reality of intelligent design. Darwin believed that the single cell was the most basic of life and that it began to multiply. Well, he didn't, and I won't defend him much, but uh, I will say this, he didn't have the benefit of the microscopes we have today. Because if he did, you would know that a single cell is infinitely complex. It is not the simplest basic building block. It is very complex with multiple parts. And to say that it happened by chance, it's a little like saying, I'm going to put a, a letter on each page and spell out Believer's Fellowship, a B-E-L-I-E-V-E-R-S space fellowship. And I'm going to put one letter on each piece of paper and I'm going to throw them out of an airplane and believe they're going to fall down and spell out Believer's Fellowship on the ground. Well, will it work? What are the odds of it happening? Yeah. Well, you know what the evolutionists would say? Yeah, but you need more time. You need to go up higher. 
that's what they when you when you say well this couldn't have happened this way well it had to have more time to happen well if I go higher and drop them out again was that improve my odds I don't think so I don't think getting on a step ladder and doing it would improve my odds uh, I would do well laying them down by hand and getting it right the first time <laughs> The single cell is vastly complex. I was told growing up that dinosaurs went extinct millions of years before man ever walked the earth. Until I got into the Word of God and saw in Psalm 74 and Job 41 about the Leviathan. Mm -hmm. Leviathan is a dragon. There's some who want to say it's crocodiles, but that doesn't work. It even talks about a fire-breathing dragon. Well, we've heard about fire-breathing dragons. I always thought they were mythological. But there is a beetle that actually emits a, a charge, an electrical fiery <laughs> charge, a certain type of beetle. And isn't it uh, believable that if, if a small beetle could, possibly there was a serpent that could in fact do that. So it's not impossible. And they were in fact around when man was here. And by the way, what is a dinosaur? A reptile. There are a lot of, a dinosaur is a generic term applied to certain reptiles. Certain species go extinct. Certain species did go extinct. There are a lot of reptiles still around. There's some large reptiles still around. Just not uh, T-Rexes and things like that. At least not in Sumner County, and I'm thankful they aren't. What they did, I'd hope they put a season on them. <laughs> a man is known as Bar Darwin's bulldog was Thomas Huxley. Huxley wrote the world, the book Brave New World, which is a, a terrible book in my opinion, but he wrote a book that basically pictured a world with no morals. And he's known as Darwin's Bulldog, and he said, I suppose the reason we leaped at the origin of the species is because the idea of God interfered with our sexual mores. Wow. Didn't want to hear it. Well, Psalm 14.1 says, The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. It says, They are corrupt. They have done abominable work. There is none who does good. Proverbs 12.15 says, The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he who heeds counsel is wise. The Bible doesn't put down do's and don'ts to ruin our fun. The Bible puts down do's and don'ts for our good and our protection and our edification. Man wants to do what's right in his own eyes, and therefore he likes the idea of being his own God, and therefore has gone to great extent to try to disprove the existence of God. We take the fossil record, we're told that layers of sediment took millions of years to form. Anybody heard that? No. Mount St. Helens gave the evolutionists a considerable number of headaches when interrupted back in the 80s, in that some of those layers of sediment formed within an hour. You can find skeletons of fish fossilized within that upside that are going up and down that pass through several layers of sediment. Yeah, and uh, the mastodon, they have found a mastodon frozen who, uh, who had undigested food in its belly, indicating a cataclysmic event took them out instantly. So, so much for uh, evolving. Um, we know from the Hubble telescope, it's given quite a bit of a struggle to them in that we were always taught that the universe pulsates. Well, what we found out with the Hubble telescope is that the universe is ever expanding. It never ceases expanding, which indicates something. If something's ever expanding, what does that mean? It had a beginning. So you see, God is as clearly at work. And Yes, I'll be the first to acknowledge within a species, evolution happens. Within a species, there are changes that occur. You know, if you take uh, some of us, in the, you take men in the Civil War, uh, a very a six-foot man or a man over six foot was very unusual. You know, you didn't see a lot of that. But, you know, dietary changes have led to people being a bit bigger. Uh, there are changes that happen within species. Uh, people adapt to a certain... Uh, environment, a certain climate, and pigmentation of the skin changes, and things of this sort. Originally there was only one species, and as they've lived in different parts and different environments, changes have occurred. So within a species, but that does not mean, uh, that's within a species, 
there's no indication of one species becoming another. No, we can take God's word as true. And someone asked the other day, where did the light come from? He said, let there be light, and there was light. And then later it says he created the sun. Well, when I look at Revelation 21, when John saw heaven, he said, I saw no temple in it, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city had no need of the sun or of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is its light. The glory of God was that early light. Now, there, there are some new Christians who want to embrace the gap theory. So between, you know, there's a big gap in there. I see no need of a big gap. God spoke it into being, and it was so. Um, second, so <laughs> what I would recommend and what we will do is take the Scripture as truth and study this truth. I commend to you the Creation Science Museum uh, in, uh, in Kentucky. It's just below Cincinnati in Kentucky, just below across the line, uh, on this side of the line. Uh, the Creation Science Museum, awesome event, shows clearly how scientifically the Genesis count of creation could have occurred. You know, nobody was there, so, well, maybe Dave, but, um, <laughs> but nobody else was around, so we can't say we know. What we do know is that, that there's, what we do know is you don't have to check your brains at the door to believe that the Bible is true. You know, that science, when you get in a conversation with folks, what they will generally say is, oh, that's so, that's, it's ridiculous to even bring that into the conversation. That's all I've ever heard. I've never heard someone bring it into the conversation. That's right. What I have seen is that when creationists do, uh, creationist scholars do defend it, they do so very handily. But very seldom is the door even open because science doesn't want to hear it. For very reason, Richard Dawkins didn't want to hear it. Well, we might have come about by a higher intelligence that would have come about by a natural means. You see, he just has to keep going further back. Folks, let's just embrace it as truth and believe it, because God is true, His Word is truth, and the truth will set you free. We can rest in Him. 2 Timothy 3.16 all scripture is given by inspiration of God as profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Study the word, apply the word, believe the word, and the truth will set you free. Let's pray. Father, we praise you and thank you for your creation that you created. And Lord, we know that we fell into sin. And as we fell into sin, you made provision for us even there through our Savior, the Lord Jesus. This morning our prayer is that you would <coughs> give us eyes to see and ears to hear and not simply embrace what the world says but to filter it through your word that your truth may set us free. In this time when so many need the Savior, there's such an effort to undermine the gospel truth through the attack of your creation account. Thank you, Lord, for men and women who are standing up to say there's too much design to the universe. From the atom to the galaxy, the principles are the same of organization. There's plenty of evidence of your presence. And we never discount that reality in Jesus' name. And I know there's some here this morning hurting, struggling in various ways. Don't you?